Psalm 27, 4 One thing I have asked of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. Beauty and God. Napakahalaga mapag-usapan natin kung ano ang koneksyon ng kagandahan sa Panginoong Diyos na may likha. Mabuti na lamang at marami-rami tayong oras para mag-aral-aral ngayong mga quarantine at uh, nagkakaroon din tayo ng pagpunta sa iba't ibang mga topic na hindi natin usually pinupuntahan sa ibang mga panahon. Kaya ay pagpasalamat din natin sa Panginoon na meron tayong pagkakataon na magbulay-bulay tungkol sa maraming mga bagay tungkol sa Diyos. And because God is in everything, God is the creator of all things, halahalos lahat ng bagay, ay dapat na pag-uusapan in connection with God. At ngayon, sa quarantine, pag-usapan natin ang beauty and God. Song of Songs 4.1 How beautiful you are, my darling! Oh, how beautiful! Your eyes behind your veil are doves. Your hair is like a flock of goats descending from the hills of Gilead. Napaka mga sensual na description ng kagandahan pat napakalinaw naman that this is part of scripture na napaka central ng beauty sa pag-uusap at mga usapin tungkol sa Diyos. Why do we admire, celebrate, desire, love, create beauty? What is beauty? Well, beauty is not tangible. Hindi siya talaga truly tangible. It is only in the mind as a pleasant feeling aroused by a combination of qualities like size, color, form, etc. Beauty is part of human origin and experience. Sa mga pag-aaral kahit sa archaeology, even primitive tools have designs or have symmetrical shapes which sometimes really don't serve a purpose other than aesthetic, pampaganda lang. The definition of beauty changes over time, but there are constants. There's always beauty in patterns, symmetry, ratio, proportion. And the patterns that keep coming up in all these things that we see as beautiful are all rooted in nature. Lahat ng paulit-ulit na mga padron ko ano ang kagandahan nakikita natin sa kalikasan. Psalm 8, 3 to 4, I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place. So pati ang pag-aayos ng mga bituin, ng heavenly bodies, may kagandahan, merong order. And patterns even become part of our biology because it helped our ancestors survive. Halimbawa, patterns and symmetry and colors and forms showed them which things are safe, edible, pleasing, and also which things were dangerous or poisonous. Sa itsura pala ng mga halaman, malalaman mo na safe ba itong kainin, safe ba itong hawakan. Genesis 2.9 The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. Why beauty makes us happy is a very interesting issue. Well, patterns are found in nature like shells, waves, clouds, flowers. Symmetry in nature signifies normality. Pagka may symmetry, merong regularness sa mga design, ang sinasabi nun sa atin, normal ito, normal ang mga bagay-bagay. Halimbawa, does the cloud signify rain sa itsura niya? Are the waves safe to swim sa itsura lang ng mga alon at agos? Can I eat this sa itsura ng halaman? Symmetry in human faces and features also show health and fertility. That's why people are attracted to physical beauty because the health and fertility of a human being can be seen in the shapes of his anatomy or her anatomy. Song of Songs 2, 3 to 4 Your teeth are like a flock of sheep just shorn coming up from the washing. Each has its own twin, not one of them 
is alone. So may symmetry pati ang ngipin at ito yung tulad sa mga gandang mga bagay that are already regular in the lives of the people writing the verses. Things that help us survive activate the reward centers in our brains. Nagagandahan tayo sa mga bagay na alam nating makakatulong for survival. Kaya nagagandahan tayo. Halimbawa, ang mga kababaihan, nagagandahan sila sa mga lalaking malalaki ang braso, malalaki ang hita, malalaki ang mga bisig. Kasi it will help them survive. Kung yun ang naging asawa nila, may pagtatanggol sila. At gusto naman ng mga lalaki, yung mga babaeng malalaki, mga balakang, kasi madaling mga anak, meron silang mga magaganda mga breasts, kasi makakasustain sila ng mga sanggol na kanilang iba breastfeed. All of that is something to do with survival. Our concept of beauty is related to survival. Recognizing signals of safety and nutrition trigger nice feelings in us. And we find all of that beautiful. Song of Songs 2-3 Like an apple tree among the trees of the forest is my beloved among the young men. I delight to sit in his shade and his fruit is sweet to my taste. Very, very uh, picturesque ang description dito ng male beauty. And the singer likens the love of her life to a tree of nourishment and sanctuary. Beauty is so hardwired in us that research shows it is a part of our instinctive brain. Now, why is beauty important? Among the reasons we have already said, without beauty, nothing else matters. In fact, one of the signs of acute depression ay eh, pagpapabaya sa sarili, sa anyo, sa amoy, sa kalusugan. Pag ang tao hindi na interesado sa kanyang itsura, sa kanyang amoy, sa kanyang kalusugan, it could be a sign of acute depression. Ibig sabihin, hindi na normal yan. Kasi ang normal, ang tao gusto siya ay mabango, gusto siya ay magandang tingnan, gusto siya ay maayos. Warped and damaged beings live amidst ugliness. Halimbawa, yung possessed man na pinuntahan ni Jesus, nakatira siya sa mga libingan. Si King Nebuchadnezzar, nung nawala ng sariling bait, naging asal hayop at halos itsurang hayop. Or living amidst ugliness damages people. Kaya kalaban ng true godliness ang poverty, ang squalor, kasi nakakasira ng pagkatao, ng dignidad, ng kagandahan. Kaya dapat ang tunay na espiritualidad, nilalabanan ng poverty, we create and produce what we need, and more than what we need para we are not only surviving, but we're also able to be generous, and we're able to create a culture that incorporates beauty. Our brains and body react to beauty. It feels natural to experience joy, pleasure, shivers down the spine, awe in sight of great artworks. Or sometimes even negative emotions of fear, anger, or disgust in front of ugliness or visually challenging stimuli. Ang bilis natin mag-react sa maganda, tingin ka agad. Sa nakakadire, iwas ka agad ng tingin, pikit ka ng mata. Sa karimari-marim, ayaw mong tingnan. Instinctive yan. When we modernize the world in the last some several hundreds of years, we exchange natural forms with artificial forms, like houses and buildings. Yung mga magagandang kweba, pinalita ng mga building na hindi naman laging magaganda, Ang magaganda lang yung sa mga monarchs, sa mayayaman, pero ang daming hindi magandang artificial houses. Ang magaganda mga landa sa gubat, pinalita ng mga kalsada. That is why city dwellers love to see and enjoy natural surroundings, structures and foods. Kasi ang tunay na nagagandahan tayo, yung natural, yung nasa nature. Kasi napakatagal na panahon ang tirahan natin, ang kaulayaw natin, puro nature. Kamakailan lang, only just maiksing panahon na ang tao ay nasa mga artificial houses, gumagamit ng mga artificial na daan, artificial na upuan. Napakatagal nature ang ating kaulayaw. Kaya ngayon ang mga city dwellers, laging gustong bumabalik sa natural setting, sa probinsya, sa mga beach, sa mga ilog, kasi yun talaga tayo. Yun ang likas. Ecclesiastes 3.11 he has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done 
from beginning to end. Beauty should be the starting point of everything. Eh, ang mga humanidad naman, in our effort to modernize, we value function over form, usefulness over beauty. But studies have shown that emotions follow form. Halimbawa, nasa hospital ka, mas maganda yung nakakakita ka ng mga colors, mga beautiful scenery, kesa drab, empty wall. Tapos kumisan, marami pa sa mga hospital, merong mga lungkot na eksena ng crucifixion na may imahin doon na ang lungkot-lungkot pa. Uh, so, marami mga tao na de-depress lalo pagka nasa mga hospital. All things in nature have a shape, a form, that tells us what they are, that distinguishes them from others. Luke 12, 27, Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. Beauty and topic. Laging beauty, topic din niya ni Jesus. Beauty begets beauty. But we neglect beauty in favor of costs, functionality, efficiency. Kaya lost tayo. Ang dami-daming mental problems sa mga tao sa modern times. Kasi ang konti-konti ng beauty na nakikita natin sa daily life, lalo sa city. We build rows and rows of concrete housing that nobody wants to live in except that they really need to, so napipilita rin sila. We build blocks of boring buildings, ugly elevated roads, or very ugly pedestrian walkways na ang pangit-pangit-pangit ng mga city. Kaya tuloy maraming stresses, maraming sadnesses, at maraming hindi maipaliwanag na sakit ang mga city dwellers. Humans don't like monotony or disorder or ugliness. Genetics sa atin yun. Ecclesiastes 3.20 All go to the same place. All come from dust and to dust all return. So here the writer describes the monotony of life and finds it meaningless. Looking at dull and vast facades makes us feel bored, uncomfortable, or depressed. In fact, boredom has been linked to raising heart rates and stress levels. Quarantine boredom Depression is a challenge for many people now. That is why nag-uusap tayo tungkol sa beauty. We should beautify quarant life. Likas sa atin, gusto natin lumalabas, sumasanghap ng mga sariwang hangin, nagbibilad sa araw, namamasyal sa mga tabing dagat, mga ilog. But quarantine doesn't allow all of that now. Kaya dapat natin pag-usapan ng beauty, how to beautify the little spot where we are quarantined para makapakonti natin, ma-minimize yung mga boredom, yung mga depression na bunga ng boredom. Beautiful surroundings improve our well-being, our behavior, our cognition, and mood. So have and replicate nature as much as possible. Kung kayo ay nabutan ng kwaran sa mga baryo, sa mga tabi ng ilog, sa mga maraming puno, eh mapalad kayo. Pero yung mga inabot sa mga cities, lalo't kung hindi kalakihan ng bahay, walang bakuran, yung paglabas mo, kalye na, tapos bawal lumabas, yung mga ganyan, dapat mag-replicate tayo, kumopya tayo ng nature. Kahit malang isa, dalawang pasko ng halaman, magtanim kayo ng pasko sa mga ng halaman, rather sa mga lata, o meron tayo mga drawing, mga picture ng mga bundok, kailangan nating ulit-uliting tingnan, lasapin, kung hindi man yung real thing, eh, yung kopya nun, kasi yun ang hinihingi ng ating pagkatao, ng ating katawan. Beautiful surroundings will improve our health. Psalm 96, 11 to 12. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. So here, the psalmist associates nature and joy. Beauty can change how people act. Beauty and visual arts help sick people heal faster. Happiness is aroused by how beautiful you find the place you live in. And in reverse, 
Sadness is aroused pag napapangitan ka sa iyong kapaligiran. Eh ngayon, kung naka-quarantine ka, lalo sa mga naka-lockdown, wala ka masyadong choices, you've got to do something to beautify the little part of the planet where you are. Para sumaya ka. It's good for your mental and emotional health. Kung may magaganda kayo mga sapin ng kama, ngayon yun na ilabas, gamitin. May magagandang unan, magagandang plato, ipaglalabas, gamitin yan. Kung meron kayo mga nakatagong magagandang ilaw, lampshed, yun ang gamitin nyo ngayon. At sa bahay, isuot nyo yung mga mas magaganda yung pambahay, hindi mga mukha tayong basahan sa bahay. Although yun ang pinakakomportable pag mukha kang basahan. Pero yung magaganda yung tuwalya, ilabas. In other words, pagandahin ang paligid para sumaya ang mata at sasama na dyan ang ating puso. God intentionally created the universe to be beautiful. Lahat ng ginagawa niya noon, sabi niya, it was good. Ecclesiastes 3.11 He has made everything beautiful in its time. Psalm 65.8 The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders. Where morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. Psalm 104.24 How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. At bawat creature magaganda, hanggang kaliit-liit ang kulisap, kalaki-lakihang bulaklak, pati mga bato, pati mga hugis na mga ulap, lahat maganda. There is built-in harmony in nature. Kaya as much as possible, we should not disturb nature. Kasi yung nature siya mismo ang nagmementay ng kanyang kagandahan at ng kanyang harmony. Genesis 1.31 God saw all He had made, and it was very good. Job 38, 31-33 Can you find the chains of the Pleiades? Can you loosen Orion's belt? Can you bring forth the constellations in their seasons, or lead out the bear with its cubs? Do you know the laws of the heavens? Can you set up God's dominion over the earth? The obvious answer for a simple man is no. Pero ang talagang tunay na sinasabi ng verses na ito that the constellations mark and are in harmony with the seasons and they order the heavens. May kinalaman kung kailan matutulog ang mga oso sa kanilang mga hibernation sa arrangement ng mga bituin sa langit. Interconnected ang lahat. That's how God meant it to be. Isaiah 40.26 Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all this? Who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. So all the stars and constellations and heavenly bodies appear in their appointed time and their cycles repeat without errors. Ang pag may sabing end, hindi yung end of the world, hindi yung end of the planet, hindi the end of life, end of a cycle of time. End of a season. Job 25.2 Dominion and awe belong to God. He establishes order in the heights of heaven. May kaayusan at ang kaayusan ay kagandahan. Humans were created to recognize and appreciate beauty, to process visual input or assess our surroundings. Beauty meets an inborn need for meaningful information. Sa physics, mayroong concept of beauty na tinatawag na the golden ratio. The golden ratio, also known as the divine proportion, is a mathematical ratio commonly found in nature. This relates to the so-called Fibonacci sequence, yung zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen in which each term is the sum of the previous two. Anong ibig sabihin natin? Yung zero plus one, ang susunod nun, one, di ba? And then one plus one, yung magkasunod na dalawa, magiging two. So yung two plus one na sinundan niya, magiging three. Yung three at yung two na sinundan niya, magiging five. Yung five at yung three na sinundan niya, magiging eight. Yung 8 at 5 na sinundan niya magiging 13, and so on and so forth. Now, ano yung Fibonacci sequence or the divine proportion 
or the golden ratio in physics. Pag tinignan natin dito sa drawing na ito at titigan ninyo, ganyan yung ratio na yan, yung kala loob-looba nung parang papabilog na yan, yung umiikot na kulot na yan, nandiyan yung mga number na tinukoy natin kanina. Nandiyan yung 0, nandiyan yung 1, nandiyan yung 2, nandiyan yung 3, nandiyan yung 5, yung 8, 13, 21, 34. Okay. Palaki ng palaki dahil lumalaki yung number. At yan yung shape na kinikreate niya sa tinatawag nga nating divine shape na ito. But this is found in nearly everything we will call beautiful. The same pattern is seen and repeated in all creations. Halimbawa, yung mga galaxies, yung sunflower, yung mga dahon na nakikita ninyo na napapaikot, no? yung mga pag-ikot-ikot ng mga, mga buhawi, ng tornado, ng mga plants, ng shell, they follow the same pattern. Pag tinignan mo sila, alam mong may isang maker, kisang kita mo yung signature, no? na uulit-ulit dito, nakikita natin yung physics concept of beauty, the golden ratio, or the Fibonacci sequence. Sa halaman, sa dahon, sa mga heavenly bodies, pati sa mga buhawi, sa mga ipo-ipo, sa uli-uli, maging sa mga kabibe. At sa mga mukha na usually tinatawag nating likas na maganda, makikita nyo dyan, pag ipinisuperimpose yung shape na yan, nasa mukha ng isang matatawag nating magandang shape ng mukha. This Fibonacci sequence is copied into structures and arts. Now, interestingly, natural artists will just create like this on instinct. Pagka ang artista ay natural ang kanyang talent, ito yung gagawa siya, lumalabas siya mga circles and shapes na yan kahit hindi niya sadyain. Meanwhile, learned and trained artists will consciously follow the rule. Pag tinignan nyo yung Tour Eiffel or Eiffel Tower sa France, sumusunod yan sa principle na yan. Yung shape ng Mona Lisa as a composition. Yung shape ng Leonardo da Vinci Last Supper as a composition. At maging ang overall shape ng Parthenon sa Greece. Yung mga temple sila doon, kita nyo yung drawing na maliit na lumaki ng lumaki na parang shell din. Makikita nyo yung nasa pattern ng architecture. May creator. Siya ang nag-decide kung ano ang maganda. At yung ganda na yan, likas na nasa atin. Kahit hindi natin sinusukat, hindi natin talagang ina-applyan ng ano-anong conscious standards, alam agad natin pag maganda ang isang bagay. Alam agad natin pag gagagandahan tayo o hindi nagagandahan. Now, fractal is a mathematical concept of beauty. Kita nyo sa physics, nandun ang Diyos. Pati sa math, nandun ang Diyos at nandun ang kagandahang nililikha ng Diyos. A fractal is an object or quantity that displays self-similarity. Ano yun? Yung kamukha niya ang mga parts niya. In a somewhat technical sense, on all scales, in other words, any part of the structure is like a miniature version of the whole structure. Yan na tinatawag nating fractal concept of beauty. Halimbawa, itong dahon na ito. Titigan nyo ang dahon na itong mabuti. Simulan natin sa pinakamaliit na dahon. Yung kaisa-isang single dahon, yung shape niya, kamukha ng isang tangkay kung saan siya kasali. At yung tangkay na kasali siya, kamukha ng mas malaking tangkay kung saan lahat sila ay kasali. At yung malaking tangkay na yan, ay kamukha ng buong halaman kung saan lahat ng tangkay ay kasale Fractal beauty. Halimbawa, dito sa mga cones na ito, ng halaman o anuman, makikita nyo, titigan nyo ang pinakamaliliit na shape. Yung korte niya, kamukha ng korte ng mga katabi niya, at yung tumpok-tumpok nila, yung buong shape nun, kamukha ng korte ng bawat isa sa kanila. At pag pinagsama-sama yung mga tumpok-tumpok na yan, yung buo nila, kabuuan, kamukha din ng maliliit na tumpok, kamukha rin ng maliliit na bahagi. Paulit-ulit ang itsura niya, from small to big, yun din ang shape. Interesting, no? Kaya hindi pwedeng aksidente lang ang nature. May creator. 
At ang creator, maganda, mahilig sa maganda. Nature follows the fractal pattern for structure integrity. Kaya yan ay nagagamit or to fit as many small parts in the smallest space without overlapping. Kaya pag ginamit sa engineering, ginamit sa building construction, yung concept of fractal uh, beauty and fractal pattern, yun ang pinaka matibay at pinaka may integrity ng mga structures. Makikita natin yan sa mga structure ng itlog na mahirap basagin, nasa mga structure ng mga dome na mahirap paghuhuin. Halimbawa, dito sa larawan na ito ng isang bulaklak. Grabe, every shape repeats itself but they don't overlap. There's a space for everything and everyone and the small is the same shape as the whole totality. Kaya hindi maganda ang barong-barong Pero ang bahay kubo, maganda. Pareho lang yan maliit, pareho lang simple yung mga gamit. Pero bakit maganda ang kubo? Kasi natural yung mga tira sa ginagamit at yung gumagawa niya ng mga taga-probinsya, likas pa sa kanila yung concept nila ng ganda. Alam nila kung paano bibigyan ng proportion ang bahay kubo, gano'ng kataas ang bubong, gano'ng kalilit ang mga bintana, gano'ng kataas ang mga hakbang ng hagdan. Likas pa sa mga taga-probinsya na naliligid ng kalikasan yung concept of beauty. Pero halimbawa, yung napwersang manirahan sa mga lungsod, mga towns, at nagdugtong-dugtong lang ng kung ano-ano mga karton-karton para magbarong-barong, di ba? Hindi maganda. Hindi sa minamaliit natin yung mga barong-barong kasi ano naman kung walang choice yung mga tao yun lang ang kaya nila. Pero hindi talaga yun na maganda. Hindi yun ang gusto ng Diyos para sa atin. Kaya dapat tayong umahon sa kahirapan, tulungan ng isa't isa para hindi tayo kailangan tumira sa hindi maganda. Hindi naman ko mahal maganda kasi maraming mahal na bahay, pangit. Marami ng mga lilit na bahay, maganda. Pag sumusunod sa proportion, pag sumusunod sa mga nakatakdang mga sukat at hugis na Diyos mismo ang nagbigay. Kaya hindi maganda ang depressed urban communities. Kasi walang harmony, walang symmetry. Pero ang mga bahayan sa mga kabundukan, lalo ng mga katutubo, ang ganda-ganda. Mga likas na material yung ginagamit, sumusunod sa natural terrain ng kinakalagyan nilang mga lugar, ang ganda ng overall effect. Kaya hindi maganda ang magulo. Tingnan nyo itong larawan na ito ng isang salt lake. Para siyang painting ng napakabatikang pintor na mahilig magkulay at magaling magmix ng colors at gumawa ng mga shapes. Sumusunod din ito sa natural laws of beauty. Pati mga salt lake, alam nila ang utos ng Diyos. The pattern of the peacock's tail in this picture follows the fractal pattern. Kung ano ang shape ng isang maliit na bilog, yun ang shape ng mga katabi niyang bilog. At pag pinagsama-sama mo sila, nabubuo ang malaking shape, nakamukha ng shape ng maliit. Even patterns of and in snowflakes. Pag tinignan mo sa microscope, yung mga maliliit na butil ng snow, ganyan ang makikita mo mga shape na pinapalakit, ginagawang Christmas decor. Pero hindi naman nakikita ng naked eye yan. Pero kita nyo kung gano'ng kaliliit yan. Pero yung pinakamaliliit niya, mga sanga, kamukha nung malaki-laking sangang kinakabilangan niya, at kamukha nung mas malaking sangang kinakabilangan ng maliliit na sanga, at pag pinagdugtong-dumbunong mo sila, kamukha nung maliit yung malaki. Mayroong Diyos na nagde-design, Diyos na maganda, Diyos na mahilig sa maganda. Amos 4.13 he who forms the mountains, who creates the wind, and who reveals his thoughts to mankind, who turns dawn to darkness and treads on the heights of the earth, the Lord Almighty is his name. In Ezekiel 16.14, In your fame spread among the nations on account of your beauty, because the splendor I had given you made your beauty perfect, declares the Sovereign Lord. God is beauty, and God is in the details. Kaya kahit tingnan mo ng microscope, the more powerful lenses you have, the more you will see beauty in micro things, in the smallest things, in quantum things. At kung meron ka malalaking lenses, mga binoculars, makikita mo ang mga bituin, ang mga buwan, ang mga planeta, makikita mo rin ang kagandahan ng kanilang mga kaayusan. Nandun pa rin yung tatak 
ng maker, ng creator. Colossians 1.17 He is before all things and in Him all things hold together. Psalm 24.1 The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Since an objective definition of beauty and ideal is based on and created by God, the journey of discovering beauty is also discovering the wonder of God. Mas kinikilala mo ang kagandahan, mas sinusundan mo, tinahabol ang kagandahan, mas lumalapit ka sa Diyos. Psalm 19, 1-4 The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voices goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. Ito ang ginagawa ng mga kalikasan ng mga likha ng Diyos. They give us beautiful songs, poems, sermons, teachings about God and God's beauty. The heavenly bodies declare the wonder and glory of God. They reveal the hands of the Creator, just like how the fractals and the golden ratio appear all over creation. Obviously, intelligence, power, and force make nature follow a pattern. And all of that is God. To become more beautiful is to become more like God. Therefore, beautify your thoughts. Kailangan pinapaganda natin ang takbo ng ating isip. 2 Peter 1, 5-8 For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. Ang ending ng lahat ng pagpapaganda ng isip, ng asal, love. Love is beauty. Beauty is love. God is love. God is beauty. Very, very interconnected. Titus 1.15 To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are corrupted and do not believe, nothing is pure. In fact, both their minds and consciences are corrupted. So kung pure ang isip mo, pure ang lalabas na iniisip. Kung maganda ang isip mo, maganda ang iyong maiisip. So alam na natin, pag hindi maganda ang napag-iisip, pagka hindi maganda ang mga lumalabas sa ating bibig, hindi maganda ang naguguni-guni, ibig sabihin, kailangang i-beautify ang ating isip, ang ating paraan ng pag-iisip. So, beautify your mind, beautify your body. 1 Corinthians 6.20 Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Lagi namang ina-associate ng mga relihiyoso to honor God with your body is tiisin mo yung body mo, gutumin mo yung body mo, huwag kang kumain, papayatin mo yan, huwag mo siyang pagbigyan, huwag mong igust- ibigay ang hilig niya. Lagi nila binabaligtad. Romans 12.1 Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Not, not, now, that sacrifice should not be limited only to pagtitiis na naman, paghihira, pangangalirang, gutom. Kasi to be a living sacrifice means yung sacrifice mo, living, alive. So, dapat yung katawan na yan, buhay na buhay. Dapat masigla, dapat maganda, dapat kumakain, exercise, gumagawa ng mabuti gumagawa ng tama, yun ang living sacrifice. At yun ang magandang gawin sa ating katawan. So, beautify your thoughts, beautify your body, beautify your surroundings. Because God created a very beautiful surrounding, huwag nating sirain. At kung nasira na, i-repair natin. Isaiah 32.18 My people will live in peaceful dwelling places, in secure homes, in undisturbed places, of rest. Yun ang kagustuhan ng Diyos para sa atin. Kaya talagang dapat na tayo magtulungan, gumawa ng magandang ekonomiya, 
magkaroon tayo ng mga tamang sweldo sa ating mga manggagawa, magkaroon ng tamang mga profit sharing para lahat merong enough resources so we will live in safety and in beauty. Beautify your social surroundings. Pinapaganda din natin dapat ang human relationships, ang pakikipagkapwa, pakikipagmabutihan sa kapwa na nasa paligid, kasama yan sa pinapaganda. Galatians 6.10 Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. Beautify your world to bring the material world into the configurations of spiritual realms of God's space. Pag pinapaganda mo yung ayos sa mga silya, sa kwarto, inaayos mo yung paraan ng pagtataob ng mga baso, pagka inaayos mo ang pagpapatong ng toilet paper sa kanyang patungan, pagka pinapaganda mo ang setting ng yung mesa, Inaayos mo ang beddings mo. Pag ginagandahan mo ang ayos ng iyong mga damit sa cabinet, ang mga tools mo diyan sa garahe, ang pagpaparada mo ng mga sasakyan, pag inaayos mo lahat yan, pag nakinig ka sa iyong inborn spirit of God of beauty, aayusin mo yan, kamukha ng ayos ng mga Milky Way, ng mga galaxies, ng mga bulaklak, ng mga puno, ng mga planeta, Magiging one ka in, in harmony with all other creation. Lulugang ang iyong dibdib, sasaya ang iyong mata, sasaya ang iyong hininga, ang iyong pakiramdam, bubuti ang iyong mood, gaganda ang iyong ugali, sasarap ang mga salitang lumalabas sa iyong bibig, you will beautify your life. Kaya dapat yung mga bahay hindi magugulo. Yung iiwan mo lang yung chinelas mo, talsik-talsik, hindi pa pantay-pantay. Yung mga plato nyo, sabog-sabog, yung mga muebles, Natapakan mo na, nadapakan na dahil nakakalat, hindi maganda ang ayos Beautify your world Iyan ang iniwan, ibinigay sa atin ng Diyos na mundo May kaayusan Hindi nagbabanggaan ang mga planeta Hindi yung paglakad mo sa bahay mo, bumabangga ka sa lahat ng cabinet Kasi mali ang ayos, mali ang arrangement 2 Corinthians 3, 17-18 Now the Lord is the Spirit And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. It's a mouthful. Ang sinasabi lang niyan, dapat tayo unti-unting nagiging kamukha ni Jesus. At si Jesus, bilang anak ng Diyos, Jesus is beautiful. Jesus is Son of God. God is God of beauty, so dapat nagiging beautiful din tayo. Hindi mo kailangan lagyan ng gender yung ganda kung pang babae yun o pang lalaki. Kaya nga sa Tagalog, maganda is for lalaki yan and for babae. Sinasabi lang, magandang babae, magandang lalaki. Pero yung ganda mismo, hindi yun bound by gender. Kasi ang ganda ng Diyos, hindi bound by gender. Psalm 139, 13-14 For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. So ang ganda ng tao, hindi lang sa proportion ng kanyang panga at ng kanyang noo, kasi iba-iba rin ang mga tao, pero yung proportion ng kanyang puso, ng kanyang spirito, yung proportion ng kanyang ugali, kasama pa yun. At meron naman mga tao na gifted sila, at mapaalad sila at blessed na yung physical na anyo nila is in conformity with usong beauty ng isang panahon. Remember, iba-ibang panahon ay iba-iba rin yung standard of what is beautiful. Pero ang mahalaga, we are beautiful inside. It's good to be beautiful. But what is good will definitely be beautiful. Created by God, every human being is wonderfully made, is wonderful. So see, appreciate, live by and live for, celebrate how God has created you and everyone else, especially during Quaran. Find, appreciate, celebrate, recreate that God created, God given beauty in everyone, in every natural thing. Huwag nating sirain ng kalikasan needlessly. Huwag Ubusin lahat ang puno of our development. 
Huwag durugin lahat ang bato para gawing graba. Huwag ibuldoz lahat ang bundok. Kailangan meron tayong igalang dahil nandyan sa ganda ng kalikasan ang kaligayahan ng ating espiritu. When we destroy beauty around us, there is a part of us that dies with it. Kaya kailangan pinapahalagahan natin ang kagandahan at kaayusan. Hindi luho, ah, hindi kayamanan. Ganda. Kahit ka walang pera, pwede mong pagandahin ang iyong environment, ang iyong ugali, ang iyong sarili. Especially during kuwaran. Limited na nga ang space na ginagalawa natin. Limited na nga ang number ng mga people na pwede nating makasama at makahalubilo. Kailangan gandahan na natin. Gandahan na yung environment. Ayusin na yung bahay na yan. Ayusin na yung kaprasong garden na yan. It's the time now to make it more beautiful because we're staying in these spaces longer. And we don't know how much longer. Kaya ayusin natin. Gandahan natin yung quality natin, environment, yung quality ng beauty ng ating kapaligiran will determine the quality of our satisfaction, happiness, and pleasure. So hanggat abot kaya, pagandahin. Hindi kailangan gastahan yan. Minsan ayos-ayos lang, konti-konting walis-walis dito, rearrange-rearrange doon, magpapaganda yung magulo. God is beauty. Beauty reveals God. Beauty shows the way to God. Beauty heals, inspires, and sets free. If you are blessed to be surrounded by beauty, by comfort, by harmony, pasalamat sa Diyos and share it with people. If you cannot physically share that beauty around you with people, send a part of it to other people. Help other people beautify their lives, their bodies, their thoughts, their environment. In spite and because of this situation of ours na may quarantine, all the more beautify your body, your thought, your words, your actions. Beautify your spirit, your surroundings, and your life. And as you beautify your life, you will become more and more aware of God. You will become more and more like God. And you will love God more and more. Beauty, love for beauty, is not vanity. It is part of our spirituality. It's part of godliness. It is built into creation. It is built into our hearts. Let us make things beautiful. I'm reminded of somebody who dedicated a book to me at nag-coach siya na isang Russian writer. Sabi, Together, let us make a beautiful world. God bless us all. Love to you, mga pamangkin. Dito tayo mag-aral ng salita ng Diyos. Dito tayo mag-aral ng mga praktikal na bagay. Magdalanginan para sa isa't isa. Makinig ng mga mensahe. At dito tayo magsasama-sama spiritually. Sa ating official Ed Lapis YouTube channel na ang address ay Sabi ni Kuya Ed. Remember, dito tayo ha. Sabi ni Kuya Ed ang ating official YouTube channel. Do not forget to subscribe. Click the subscribe button and ring the bell for notification. Like, comment, and share our official YouTube channel. Visit Ed Lopi's website for daily devotion, audio podcast, latest video message, send your prayer request, subscribe to mailing list and more. Visit edlopis.com.ph